Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radacad. In this video, I want to talk about OneDrive or SharePoint connections with the lake house in Microsoft Fabric through one lake shortcut. Let's go and check it out how this works. Shortcut in Microsoft Fabric is a way that we can connect to external sources or even internal source within Microsoft Fabric environment without copying the data. For example, if you have a lake house with one date table and you want to access the same date table in another lake house, you'll create a shortcut for that, which I created a video about this. Shortcuts could be uh, created as a managed shortcut or unmanaged shortcut. When it is managed shortcut, it means that you are connecting to an existing Delta Lake table and you'll connect it over here without copying that data, you'll have access to that Delta Lake table exactly like the lake house example that I mentioned. You are connecting to the date table existing in another lake house, in another warehouse, even in another workspace. Uh, but you can also create unmanaged shortcut. This is usually when you have files. Let's say you have PDF files, image files, even CSV, Excel files, Word files. Um, a lot of these files can be stored in OneDrive or SharePoint. That is the place that uh, most of the organizations are using these for their uh, document management. Now, instead of copying that data into Microsoft Fabric environment to access those files, you could create a shortcut for that. This feature at the moment is preview at the time of creating this video, uh, but it will be available, generally available soon. You can try it even now. So how does this work? I'll go to my, uh, to my Fabric environment. So as you can see here, I'm in my Microsoft Fabric environment in a workspace that is Fabric Capacity Workspace. Uh, in order to try shortcut, uh, one of the places you can do this is using a lake house. So you could either create a lake house or go to an existing lake house, which in my case, I'll just move to an existing lake house. So in this lake house, as you can see, I have a few tables and files. Um, in order to create shortcut on the tables, you'll click on the three dots in front of the tables. If you want to create shortcut on the files, you'll click in the three dots in front of the file. So, uh, if I'm doing unmanaged shortcut, it would be from here. I could even create a folder and I can say all my OneDrive uh, files goes into this folder, or you could even just create the shortcut directly. Let's say in this case, I want to create the shortcut under this. So I'll go ahead and say new shortcut. Shortcuts could be internal or external. As I mentioned, internal is in another place in your one lake environment, like you could connect to an existing lake house and grab the files from there, or externals could be all of these sources. OneDrive and SharePoint added recently, and they work pretty much similar in the way that they work in this environment. So let's say I'm going to choose OneDrive, for example. Uh, you'll need to create a new connection to your OneDrive environment. I already have a new, I'll already have a connection to uh, my OneDrive and SharePoint. I'm just going to use that. Uh, then when I click on next, this will show me uh, my OneDrive uh, file structure or at least the places that I have access to. In my case, I have access to these few folders, uh, which in some of these I might have some files. So when I go and click on any of these folders, I'll see the files in those folders as well. Uh, and I can create a shortcut to this folder. Uh, when you create shortcut, depending on the type of data you are getting, you can also do data transformation. This is called shortcut transformation. It's not a huge amount of transformation. It is not similar to doing all the custom transformations you do when you create a data flow gen 2. But if you have CSV files, um, if you have Excel files, this can easily detect a lot of those uh, JSON files, things like that. In my case, I'm not going to do any transformations. I'll just skip this step. I can change the name of the shortcut, like I can call it different thing if I want to, but it is okay. I'll just keep it like that and I'll create the shortcut. That's it. That is the whole thing you need to do to create the shortcut. Now, once the shortcut is created, you work with it as if the files are in this lake house. So here you can see that 
uh, I'm going under the under file section in my lake house and under this folder this is the shortcut this uh, small link icon shows that it is a shortcut and these are the CSV files in there I can even click on one of these and actually see the data in there if it is something that is visible so in this case it's a CSV file so I can actually see that as you can see it's not just for structured data it could be any files like here I have a PNG like an image file uh, the good thing about this is that it comes with all the normal uh, attributes that a file in Microsoft Fabric environment has so when I click on properties I would be able to get the ABFS path, relative path, or URL that I could use any of these in my uh, other applications and access this file as if it already exists in this lake house. That is the main thing about the shortcut. Now, in this case, I could use this directly, for example, uh, in my report link to this particular files uh, or I could do any actions related to that in my case I can even load this into a table if I want to there's a feature here in Lakehouse that if you have a CSV file you can load it as a table uh, it would make it as a Delta Lake Parquet format table uh, or even if I have a notebook like I can go and create a notebook here even if I have a notebook and if I'm if in my notebook I'll go and connect to that lake house I can easily access that file as if this exists in um, in my normal uh, lake house environment so shortcut is like the file in your lake house environment I'll go and say connect to existing data source this would be the lake house that I'm connecting to and here I would see the tables and the files like for example I can go to the files I can go and find this and under this I would be able to see this and let's say for example in this case if I want to load this CSV file uh, as a pandas format or in spark I can just use that and this as you can see address the file as if the file already exists in my um, lake house with a uh, with, a AB, uh, with a relative path in this case. I can run this, this will load it into a data frame and then I can use that data frame to save it as a CSV file uh, or as I said I could simply just say load this data um, as, a, as a table over there, so like this. It understand that it is a comma separated file so in simple transformations is detectable but if you have more transformations I certainly suggest you to go and create a data flow gen 2 that supports that uh, so the beauty of this whole method is that it's so um, simple you have all of your files in one lake uh, in OneDrive and uh, SharePoint you don't have to copy them you can easily access those files through this uh, if you want to bring them in a structured format, I would suggest to use Dataflow Gen 2, something like that, that would convert it to a table format. Uh, but if you just want to access the files, the shortcut here is a really simple way to do that. So as you can see here now, I got that CSV file loaded as a table over here, which is accessible um, through something like Power BI as a Delta Lake format now because this is now Delta Lake Parquet uh, table format. Uh, the whole experience is quite simple. I, uh, I'm pretty sure that this would get better and better. This is a preview feature at the moment. It's a great integration between OneLake and the SharePoint and OneDrive. I hope this video helped you in your Microsoft Fabric implementation. We create videos on these subjects weekly. If you liked our videos, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until the next video, bye.